What's going on guys, Brett Pro Angel here, bringing you today another deck profile. So there's a lot of hype around Drytron, and a lot of you may not be able to afford the cards. Like, you know, some of the cards may be super expensive, like um, Access Code Talkers, over $100. Zeus is pretty expensive. Drytron Novas are pretty outrageous. I do believe they're sitting at 35. Uh, Diviner of the Heralds is like, I do believe 75 at the time of this recording. So. I'm just going to show you a deck profile and combos at the end of a budget Drytron deck in the deck profile. And I'm going to show you, um, you know, how you can run Drytron if you're just trying to have fun with it. Um, not really like take it to like any like big events or anything like online or anything, but you know, maybe just want to casually play at locals. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and dive right into it. To start, we have the most important Drytrons, which is Drytron Alpha Thuban. This card is maybe some cents. You might might find them for a dollar, three dollars tops for a playset. This card is the best Drytron in the deck. It searches you a ritual monster. Um, very cheap, very budget friendly. Next, we have three Zeta. Uh, Zeta, same thing. It's since you could probably pick up a playset of all the Drytrons for less than five dollars maybe zeta is the one that searches the ritual spell um very very important you gotta have three alpha three zeta these are the most important Drytrons of the deck um next we only run um two alpha in the budget or do sorry two delta in the budget version um most builds only run two delta anyway um in this build we want to see as many drytrons as we can don't necessarily want to max out on this but we don't want to just have one it's just a free draw really good in a grind game all right and next in this particular build we need two gamma this build has to have two gamma because we don't have access to nova um gamma is just enabling us to do some really cute combos Moving on to the fairies, that's it for the Drytrons. You should be able to pick those up for fairly cheap. All right, for the weenie fairies, we have Eva and Cyber Petite. Um, I do believe Eva's maybe $5. It's nothing too expensive. Cyber Petite is rather cheap. It's a common, so it's not really hard to pick up these cards. Eva is five bucks so i mean you know take it or leave it you're gonna need this card no matter what uh, next on the list we have herald of the orange light okay guys now i know what you're thinking brett pro angel i can't afford the alties guys they have common printings they have rare printings you don't necessarily need the alties the alties are a little expensive but the rares i do believe only go for maybe eight dollars but you definitely need three in this deck next since we can't afford diviner we run one manju and to go with manju we also are running vanity's ruler which is hence on why we want to have two gamma because worst case scenario we can't go full drytron combo we're going to drop vanity's ruler and also just because it's searchable one lancia and lancia is really good against the meta currently so vanity's ruler was really prominent in the old builds of drytron but now it's even more prevalent than ever ever in the budget builds i know what you're thinking i can't afford an alt you don't need an alt vanity's ruler is an ultra printing and it's probably sense at best all right moving on to the ritual monsters we have two full and one o fuel yes if we're doing budget drytron we have to have the megalith engine there's no if ands or buts about it megalith is budget as it gets and it does some really insane combos uh i don't like bethor i think having a second fool is much better um that's just my personal opinion you don't want to run another megalith like a fourth one because you don't want to break you want to make this as consistent as possible all right and then we're moving on to the cyber angels 
Um, we got one Natasha, one Idaton, and one Benton. This is as budget as it gets. I do believe Natasha's maybe four or five dollars. She's not expensive. Idaton is a common. You could probably find Idaton for like literally cents, maybe a quarter. <laughs> Benton was probably the most printed card in the set that Drytron came out. So, I mean, take it or leave it. The, this is as budget as you get. Um, and the last ritual monster is Herald of Perfection. We don't want to run ultimateness in this build because ultimateness, we have to run preparation or rights as a three of in the budget version, which I know some of you competitive Yu-Gi-Oh players might say this is disgusting, but we're talking about casual Drytron, just having fun with it. Being able to afford the build, Herald of Perfection is searchable by preparation of the rights, as opposed to Herald of the Ultimateness is not. Herald of the Perfection, yes, the ulti might be a little pricey, but this also has a gold rare printing and an ultra rare printing. I do believe the gold rare printing is sitting around $8, so it's nothing too serious. Moving on to the spells. We got three Cyber Emergency. This card is not expensive at all. This card is maybe a couple dollars, so you could probably get a play set for this around five or six bucks, to be quite honest. Maybe even cheaper, to be honest. Cyber Emergency is not that expensive. You have to have it. It's Rota for your Drytrons. It is not, not like, you necessarily have to have it. You really do have to have it, but it's got reprinted, so it's not hard to pick up. Next. A lot of you competitive players might throw up when I show this, but since there's not diviners in the budget list, we have to have three extra foolish burial um, because what this does, yes, it's a hefty cost. You pay half your life points, uh, send one monster from your extra deck to the graveyard. You can only activate once per turn. Yes, I know what you're thinking. The cost is a little hefty. Now, we're not necessarily worried about it though because in most Drytron decks, if you if you go full combo, you just win. Life points don't matter at that point. So we're trying to go full combo without diviners. So without having diviners, you definitely have to have this as a three of. It's going to send Herald of the Arclight, by the way. And then next, we have three Preparation of Rights. This card is very must must have as a three of in the budget version. In the actual build, I don't even play this card, but we have to facilitate our plays. And this is just such a good combo piece. We have to get to our Benton. We have to get to other card ritual monsters. It's very important to have. And then next, we also, the one ofs, we run one preparation of rights, one called by the grave, one foolish burial. These one ofs are so important. Foolish burial just allows us to continue our combo. Called by the grave lets us play through hand trap. Preparation of rights we have in here because we do run Dawn of the Herald, which coming next are ritual spells. We have Dawn of the Herald and Medionis Drytron. So basically, just to give a little bit of an explanation, with having preparation of rights, uh, this, none of these cards are really expensive. The only one remotely expensive out of these is Medionis Drytron. And this card is sitting about, I think, eight to $10 at the time of this recording. But basically, preparation of rights is going to search you Dawn of the Herald and your Herald of Perfection all in one search. So even if you get drolled, you have access to both of them. Medionis Drytron has gotta have this. Um, I would definitely recommend dropping like the $10 on it. You definitely gotta have it. It's only a one of, so it's not too crazy. And then last but not least, we only play one Fafnir. I know what a lot of you are thinking, why do you need Fafnir if you're not running Novas? You can't afford them. Well, think about it. We can also search our ritual spell. Um, that is very important. Um, I know it seems kind of bad, but we're also thinking about budget here. We got to have a budget version. So with that being said, Fafnir is very important, at least as a one of. Moving on to the extra deck. Now the extra deck is going to be kind of weird. A lot of you are going to kind of turn heads. Um, basically, 
you gotta have one Mu Beta Fafnir. All right, if you really, really want to play a budget Drytron deck, I would invest in at least one of these. This might be the most expensive card in your deck, and it's going to be about $25. At the time of this recording, Mubeta Fafnir dropped $25 on this one card. I know what you're thinking, but this is supposed to be budget. Rest assured, this deck is going to be less than $100. Shoot, probably less than $70, to be quite honest. Maybe even less than $50, realistically. But more on the lines, probably less than about 70 or 80. You gotta have one of these because at least one is very necessary to facilitate your combos. Next, for the last three XZs, we don't have the money for Zeus here. So what we do, we run one Fucho, one Dweller, and one Beatrice. Now you might think, why do we need Fucho if we're not running Zeus? Fucho is really important because if they hand trap you to death, you can sit on a Fucho and you survive a turn and then you can potentially OTK. Abyss Dweller just allows you to go into a Dweller with your Manju and your Ophiel. Beatrice, if you have full full combo, it's just a free foolish burial. Plus you could get Eva for more negates. And yeah, so that's all for the ritual monsters. Now moving on to the link monsters. <clears throat> the weenie ones. We have obviously one Link Kribo, one Herald of the Mirage Lights, and one IP. All right, and I know you guys are thinking, well, Repro Angel, IP is kind of expensive. It has a reprint. The reprint should only be about $10. Tops, like realistically, the, the reprint of IP is not that expensive. Uh, Link Kribo is not expensive. Herald of the Mirage Lights is not expensive either. All right. Moving on to the next cards. We got one Geonator Transverser and one Nightmare Cerberus. Okay, this is as budget as it gets. You're gonna catch your opponents off guard with Geo. If you know how to properly utilize this card, you are gonna catch somebody slipping and you're gonna steal one of their big boss monsters. And Cerberus is as budget as it gets. The more competitive versions don't play either of these cards, but in a budget build, you know, it's kind of necessary because you have more space. And then for the Nightmares, we have one Phoenix, one Unicorn. Unicorn is still important, even if you don't have access code. Phoenix is just important to out floodgates. All right, and for our only boss monster, Link Monsters, we have Appaloosa and Boral Sword. Boral Sword is as budget as it gets, is for a boss Link Monster. Appaloosa, yes, the secret rare is a little expensive, but it does have a reprint, however, that is only about seven or eight dollars. So Appaloosa is very obtainable, as well as Boral Sword. And then the last two cards in the deck, we run two Herald of the Arc Lights. Yes, we need two Heralds because we are running Foolish Burial Goods and we don't have Diviner. So that is it for the deck profile. I really hope you all enjoyed this. Um, yeah, so next I'm just gonna go ahead and display the combo. All right guys, so now I'm just gonna do some test hands with you. Um, this deck is actually not bad for casual play. So let's just go ahead and draw our first hand. Wow, that's actually just full combo. Even more full combo. So yeah. Um, from here, we could probably just um, go Alpha Effect, we'll Tribute Zeta, and that is going to search us our Benton. Okay, and then we'll go Zeta Effect in the Graveyard, we'll Tribute Benton, that's going to search us our Ritual Spell, and then we'll get Benton's Effect. So we have Spell, Benton's Effect, can search us our Manju. We don't even need to get Manju here because we have Foolish Burial Goods. So you know what? I think I'm just gonna do something really cute. And I think we'll just get Vanity's Ruler. Okay. And then from here, we can overlay these guys. For Mubeta Fafnir. Okay. And then Mubeta, when it's summoned, is going to send a Drytron. We'll send Gamma from our deck to the grave. Okay. And then we can go um, Cyber Emergency. That'll add us our last Drytron, Delta. Okay, so yeah, we're actually in a really, really good spot. So we'll just go Medionis Drytron. We'll detach a card and we'll get Benton. Okay, and then we can just go 
uh, Gamma in the graveyard, tributing Benton to get Gamma and our Alpha. And that's gonna tr uh, trigger our Benton effect. Benton, in this case, is going to search us Idaton. Okay, and then we'll use our Medionis in the graveyard on our Gamma. And then we can just go ahead and fire off Medionis, detached from the Mubeta. And that's going to bring out Idaton. And then Idaton's effect will trigger. We'll get Medionis once again. Okay, and just keep in mind, we have not normal summoned yet. From here, we can go extra foolish burial. That can send our Herald of the Arclight. And Herald of the Arclight will trigger. We gotta pay half our life points, but if we just win, it doesn't matter. That's gonna search us Herald of Perfection. Okay. So now, we are in a really good position. So now we can go um, Delta Effect, pitch our Herald of the Perfection, reveal a card, and draw. Foolish Burial. That's decent at best. So now our board is kind of interesting. We have full combo, that's for sure. We'll go Medionis Drytron on the Delta to get our Herald of the Perfection. And then from here, we can link this. Actually, we'll use our Gamma into Link Karibo. And this is without the Megalith combo too. Okay, and then we'll activate Foolish Burial just as an extender for next turn. Um, Foolish Burial probably send us just another Drytron. Actually, we can even save this. Yeah, no need to even fire it off. Fire it off. So what we're gonna do now, um, we can go ahead and just tribute these cards. Yeah. Tribute Summon. Idaton has quite a bit of defense, so we'll just leave her on the field for Vanity's Ruler. All right, now look at what we have here. This right here is full combo with Budget Drytron. So what we have, oops, sorry, we'll probably actually just tribute the Idaton. That way we have another Fairy Engrave, and then we'll leave the Mubeta. So yeah, basically what we have here, we have a Fairy in the Grave, plus Herald of the Arclight, which is another fairy. So when we negate with Herald of Perfection, we can pitch Eva to search um, Cyber Petite and Herald of the Orange Light, okay? We have Vanity's Ruler, they cannot special summon monsters. And we have Link Karibo in case they have a way to try to out the Vanity's Ruler. So yeah, that's basically the first um, test hand. I just wanted to show you guys that this deck is not bad. It's very good for casual play. You can have a lot of fun with Drytron. Um, it's still actually insanely broken, even without all the expensive cards. So next test hand. All right, and I like it. It's not bad. So from here, we can go um, Fafnir. And in this case, we don't have Novas. You gotta remember, we're running a budget version. So this has to search us our ritual spell. Okay, and then we can go Cyber Emergency. We already have our Ritual spell, so we don't need to get Zeta. So from here, I would probably just get Delta because Delta is just a free draw. And then we'll activate Alpha's effect. We'll tribute our Delta. And that's gonna search us our Benny Boy. Wherever he is, there he is. I'm gonna shuffle because we're gonna be attempting to draw. And then we're gonna activate Delta's effect in Graveyard, Tribute Benton. And that's gonna bring him out and we're gonna reveal Medionis, draw one card. That's pretty good. And then Benton's effect will trigger. Now this combo, we have to use the Megaliths or else it's a little lackluster. We get Manju to our hands. And then we can just go ahead and normal summon Manju and activate Manju's effect. That's gonna search us our Megalith Fool. And then we'll just go Medionis Drytron on, oh, sorry, I, <laughs> I gotta go into the guy. All right, so now we go into Mubeta. Mubeta's gonna trigger, that's gonna send our Gamma. There he is. So Gamma's in the grave. All right, now we go Medionis Drytron 
we are going to tribute one to bring out full. Fool's effect's gonna activate. We'll add Ben 10 to our hand. And then we're, that's gonna make him a level six. And then we'll activate Fool's second effect, tribute Ben 10 to summon a Megalith. Which is our Ophiel. So we get Ophiel on the field. And then we're gonna go chain link one Ben 10, chain link two Ophiel to chain block here. So Fool's gonna search, or Ophiel's gonna search us a Fool. And then Benton is going to search us an Idaton. Oh, we actually don't even need Idaton here. Sorry. Because we've already used all of our Drytrons, except Zeta. We don't really need Zeta. So from here, we can just go um, activate Ophiel's effect. We can, tr uh, yeah. No, I think I want to go into Dweller. From here, I wanted to show you the full extent of what this deck can do. So in this combo, we'll just go into Abyss Dweller. Abyss Dweller is a real card, and it's really good against Drytron as well. So we don't even need to make Beatrice in this combo, but we will go uh, Ritual Spell and Graveyard to add back. We can activate our Gamma, tributing our um, Full in Hand to, uh, sorry. We'll tribute Perfection because we're about to use him anyway to bring out Gamma and Delta, okay? And now we can just go ahead and activate Medionis Drytron. We'll detach. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Guys, I'm like screwing up. All right, from here, you'll just go into Link Karibo. All right, and then we can activate Medionis Drytron, detach, to bring out Herald of the Perfection. Preferably you want it in this other zone, so we'll just flip flop them. Um, so yeah, um, there's that. And then from here, we just have some really interesting combos. We can just go link these two into IP Mascarena. Okay, and look at what we have here. Now granted, we don't have Eva, we don't have Eva in our hand, but we do have some really good follow-up. Um, what we have here, we have a Link Karibo with an IP. The IP can potentially go into Appaloosa with Link Karibo in full. We also have Herald of Perfection with at least one negate. Not to mention, we also have a Dweller, which could shut our opponent down. Plus, we have Called By for an additional interruption. All right, so we're gonna do one more test hand. I just wanted to be able to show you guys the full extent of what a budget Drytron deck can do. Um, budget does not necessarily mean it's bad. So that was out of two hands, we drew remotely decent. All right, we're gonna shuffle up one more time and see what we can draw. Hopefully we can draw some sauce. Okay, one more hand. And that is absolutely good. I actually like to see it. So now we'll go Fafnir effect. Fafnir is gonna obviously add our ritual spell because in this version, we kind of have to. And then we can just fire off Cyber Emergency. And in this case, I would probably get, mm, it's either Delta or, yeah, I think Delta would probably be optimal here because we already have a lot of the rituals that we would need. No, you know what? Yeah, we'll go Delta. All right, and then we can just fire off Delta, tribute Benton to bring out Delta, reveal a ritual spell that they already know we have to draw one. Oh, wow. And then Benton's effect's gonna trigger. So in this case, Benton can add us. I would probably just go with Herald of Perfection since I already have Idaton. Maybe. Yeah, probably Herald of Perfection. Okay. And then from here, we can just go ahead and fire off our Medionis Drytron. And mind you, this combo is going to play around Nib too. So we're going to tribute our Delta to bring out Herald of Perfection. And then we'll just go ahead and normal summon Manju. Ooh, 
Oops. Not gonna lie, guys, I kind of messed that one up. But um, yeah, so wait, what I probably should have done instead of doing this, probably keep this in hand, this on field, this in field, this in hand. Um, so yeah, we go normal summon Manju, activate Manju effect. We have to get full here. I kind of messed up, not gonna lie. Don't hate me for it. And then we'll go Mediona Stritron on the Delta to get full and then activate Fool's effect to get Benton. And then um, we'll activate Fool's other effect to tribute Benton. And that is going to special summon Ophiel. And then chain link one Benton, chain link two Ophiel will get full. And then Benton's effect will trigger as well. And in this case, I would probably get Eva. Maybe. Do we have perfection? Yeah, we do. We'll go Eva. And then we can just go Ophiel's effect, tribute himself and full in hand to get Herald of Perfection. Okay, and then from here, we can just simply make an IP. So that wasn't like the most optimal starting point. But that was just with one Drytron. We only had one Drytron to make this combo work. And so basically what we have here, we have a Herald Perfection with Interruption, so we can pitch our Eva. And we also have two fairies in the graveyard that we can banish to search a Cyber Petite for follow-up and another or, or an Orange Light. And we also have IP. So once we're already using these negates, we can just use IP to further extend. And then we draw a wow. Well, Draw don't matter because we would probably search our deck anyway. But yeah, I just really wanted to show you guys what this deck can do, even with budget. So yeah, I just want to thank you all for watching. Don't don't mind me screwing up that third combo. Um, I'm so used to like the new Drytron with Diviner, so I had to kind of think about it. But yeah, so with that being said, um, I really hope you all enjoyed. This is Drytron budget, just casually playing. Thank you all for watching. Brett Pro Angel out.